Hey, this is Malcolm341. In this video, we're going to look at some Maya modeling tips and tricks. So today we're going to look at the fastest way to align diagonal surfaces, how to align UV shells, which is kind of a hidden feature, and using drag and drop to assign textures without having to create a material first. So let's get into it. Okay, so first we're going to check out how to align the object to the other surface. This is something that I need to do all the time. It's so painful, uh, but there's actually a very easy way to do this and it works really good. So uh, let's say we've got this kind of funky shape going on here and it's, this is thing is totally arbitrary. So we've moved it around. This is not like a right angle or anything. In fact, like let's just make that angle worse. Like it's completely arbitrary, this surface or that surface or any of those surfaces. So uh, basically, you know, what we would do here is we would want to get this surface onto that plane and like you could try to eyeball rotate it and that's never going to work it's not going to be perfect it's going to take a lot of time there's a lot of ways to do this but they all suck and they all take way too much time so basically what you can do is there's a tool uh called the let's just go into the modify here the tool is called the snap together tool this tool is awesome I use this thing so much so basically what the tool does is it lets you just enter the tool here it lets you pick a face on one object and a face on another object and it will project that object onto the other object perfectly and so i'm just going to click this face here you get the one arrow and i'm going to click this face here and then you get the other arrow and what's going to happen when i press y or i press enter is it's actually going to transform that shape perfectly onto the other plane so you can see it's actually aligned perfectly with that face so now the really cool thing whoops let me just switch this back the really cool thing here is that when it rotated it, it actually took the rotation on the X and made it correct. So if I zero that out in the channel box here, you'll see it goes back to flat. If I just hit on do, we get back to the angled view. So now why this is important is because if I try to move it around, it's not going to actually slide on that plane. So what you can do is you can hold down W on the keyboard and also hold down left click. And when that, you hold those both down, you get this menu that comes up. And the default is world. And if you change the world space to object space, it will actually change the gizmo to respect these rotation values. So now that I've done that, you can see the gizmo is now aligned to this 51, 5, 3, 4, whatever value. So that means I can drag this little green gizmo around here and it will stay on the plane without having to constrain it or do any weird stuff. It's not actually stuck to the surface. It's just that because the transform is there, it's now aligned with that surface perfectly. So that only takes two seconds. And then the cool thing is um, you can just keep using the tool. So let's just go back into modify and we'll go to the snap together tool. And let's say that I wanted to put this face like on this angle. So same thing, hit wire enter. And then that's perfectly aligned with that as well. Or this one to, I don't know where, down here. Same thing, go again, or whatever. I've completely changed my uh, slope of the other object. I've done some modeling or whatever. I need to get this back on, so I actually can't see the bottom, so I'll just drag it out there for a second. And then I'll press Y to re-enter the, uh, the tool that I was last using, which is the Snap Together tool, and select that and that, and then hit Y again to accept. So it doesn't matter if I keep changing the object. I can just keep reassigning it and stick it there. And then what's cool is I could duplicate the object with uh, control D and then, you know, whatever, move on from there. And I'm just gonna delete this here. The other thing that I should mention while I'm in here is like, oh, you might wanna scale it now, but it's not gonna scale from that point. So what you could do is you could always just move the pivot point down there by pressing D, hold, sorry, holding D on the keyboard and then left clicking on the face. And then once we've got that, we'll scale along there. So again, go to the modify, snap together tool, go in here, hit Y, whoops. And then now we could also scale it from that position as well if you wanted to make a little weird sci-fi bolt or something and then just duplicate that around as much as you want, wherever you want. Okay, so like I mentioned, aligning UV shells is kind of a hidden feature in the newer versions of Maya. So let's check that out right now. So uh, first I'm just gonna turn on the checkerboard and then I'm also gonna turn on the dimming so we can actually see the shells. So I'll explain what I mean by saying that it's a hidden feature. So 
If you have some UVs selected and you want them to snap down to the bounds uh, of another selected UV, you can go into the align and snap feature and then you get these uh, icons here, which will snap to the various different bounds of the object. So for example, this one's gonna snap these verts down to this next selected vert because it's the farthest away in that direction. So if you click it, see it'll collapse like that. Or for example, if I had all of these and I wanted them to go snap over to this vert, I could click this button, which was gonna take all of that stuff and push it over to the farthest bound that way. And I should also mention, uh, if you don't see this UV toolkit in the newer version of Maya, you'll, you can go to tools and then you can say hide or show the UV toolkit. So if yours isn't showing up by default, just go into tools and say show UV toolkit. I actually find this thing to be quite hideous. So I'll show you a better uh, UV menu that you can use if you don't like this thing. I just find it really hard to like expand all of these menus and have to kind of search visually through so many different options. There's like a thousand options in there. So let's go back to align and snap. So I'll show you the hidden trick that's going on here. So um, you used to be able to take like an actual uh, like UV shell, like one of these guys and snap that down to another UV shell without collapsing the verts. And I actually had to uh, email Autodesk cause I was like, where did this feature go in the new version of Maya? So I'll show you that right now. So the magic trick is that you have to right click and instead of going into UV mode, you have to go into UV shell. And when you have a UV shell selected, then you can snap the UV shell to its bounds. So it's exactly the same menu. In the older versions, there used to be a different menu for this. And then you click the same button. And so you can snap the shells that way. And so if you have all this stuff selected and you want to snap it all to the center, you would click that. Or if you want to snap it all to the center horizontally, you would click that. Um, so that's the trick. Now, as I mentioned, I find this thing like, it's so disgusting. I hate this thing. So uh, what you can do if you don't want to use this at all, like you don't need this at all, going to hide this completely. I never have that thing open. It wastes screen space and it actually just slows you down when you're working. Uh, so what you can do is you can hold shift and you can hold right click at the same time and it will bring up this menu, which is that exact same menu, except organized a lot better. So for example, if you wanted to do the thing that we just did, so right click, go to UV shell, select some UV shells, and then hold shift, hold right click, and then align shells is just right there. Just drag over to it and then you get all your min max alignments. So let's go center like that, or same thing, center like that. So I find that way faster to use that tool. I highly recommend building up the muscle memory to use the shift right click, especially for the UV editor stuff because it just makes all of this stuff a lot more accessible and it will be context sensitive. So if you're in UV shell mode, you'll get the align UV shells there. And if you're in UV mode, select some UVs, you'll get align UVs. So the menu will actually change its name and its function based on, whoops, based on uh, what component you have selected. Okay, and let's check out how to assign textures pretty much the fastest way that I know of. So uh, basically, uh, what we're going to do is uh, first we're going to go to Windows and we're going to go to Rendering Editors and we're going to open the Hypershade where we will make texture and material nodes. And this is going to be kind of gross because this is kind of like a dual wor uh, dual monitor workflow. So you're just going to have to bear with me when you see all these uh, gross windows all on one screen. Typically, I would have the Hypershade open on the, the other monitor like all the time. Uh, so what you basically do, it's really easy. It's a super cool trick. Um, so you just need to find the texture wherever it is on your hard drive. In this case, I put it on my desktop uh, just for this demonstration. So let's say you want to bring in a rust texture or whatever texture you want. You just have to select it and literally just left mouse drag drop it into the Hypershade window and boom, there it is. It's that easy. You've got it right there and it's ready to go. Now the other cool thing is it'll automatically create the file node for it. But the other cool thing is you don't actually have to create a material for it. All you have to do is select your model and then just right click the uh, texture and say assign textures material to viewport. And when you do that, it will automatically create the shader for you. So basically you drag and drop your texture in and then you do like one right click and you've got your texture assigned and ready to go. So super fast, I use this all the time. It's way better than like going in here and checking out the file menu and browsing for the texture, assigning the file node, creating the material, blah, 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 using the node editor. That shit is all way too slow. Just drag and drop it and then assign it and you've got your basic Lambert um, set up with, uh, with your texture already plugged in. 
If you like this video and want to see more game art tips and tricks, please click the subscribe button. As usual, any links will be in the description. If you've got any questions, post them in the comments area. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a fantastic day.